In this video, we're going to be covering the ever-elusive and often confusing subject of linear color space in V-Ray for Maya. So in our scene, we have two spheres with the V-Ray standard material and two planes, the plane on the right having a HDR high dynamic range image attached to it, and the plane on the left having a standard sRGB JPEG image texture pumped through it. And if we were to render this image as is, this is what we would get. And this is what you would call uh, an under gamma image. It has an oversaturation of color on our swatches, uh, verging on the point of having hot spots if we were to increase the illumination beyond this point. Our illumination for the scene is being incorrectly represented. There is a lot more color and light information in the scene than what we're being able to see right now. Our HDR image is being underexposed and oversaturated, which we don't want. And our sRGB image is also out of sorts. So what we need to do is get this image into a proper linear color space. And to do that, come over to our color mapping section in our V-Ray render settings and set our gamma from 1 to 2.2. Leave on effect background and checked don't affect colors. Now if we render again, you'll notice that there's no change. Now that doesn't mean that our settings over here are incorrect, it just means that our frame buffer is not being viewed in a proper linear color space. And that's because it defaults to not being linear. We have to set it by taking this sRGB tab and then that applies a gamma of 2.2 to our image to bring it out of the under gamma and into a proper linear color space. And let me pause for a moment and uh, let's, let's break down what these terms even mean. What are we talking about when we say uh, linear, gamma, 2.2 values, values of 1? An sRGB gamma 2.2 is the industry standard color space for 99% of computer monitors. It's a standard that was set back in the early 90s by Microsoft and unless you are using a Rec. 709 calibrated HD monitor, 99% of the time your monitor wants to be viewing things in a gamma of 2.2 and where this becomes a disconnect is our 3D software packages like Maya and 3D Studio Max. They output their images using math that spits out a gamma value of 1. And so what we're doing when we're changing these color mapping settings or adding gamma correct nodes to our textures is we're offsetting uh, the, the math from Maya to the gamma of the monitor. And I can illustrate that point better if I take a look at this gamma correct node itself. Now if you've ever looked at this node, uh, you've probably glanced over it and, and, and didn't pay attention. But this graphic itself explains the entire linear workflow. The blue line represents an under gamma value of 1 that our 3D software packages inherently kick out. The red line represents the sRGB gamma 2.2 that our monitor wants to view things in. And the green line represents the merging of these two values to equal out into a linear color space. So the sRGB 2.2 gamma offsets this gamma of uh, color space of 1 equaling our linear workspace A to B, perfect color, perfect light, perfect texture representation. So now, what we need to do, our swatches are fine, our HDR is fine, we need to affect this sRGB image, and we do that by applying this gamma correct node. So we go into our sRGB image, and we want to break this connection that is coming straight from the texture file into our shader. And we want to replace that input with the input of the gamma correct node. 
and now if we go into the gamma correct node you'll see that I've set up a gamma which is 0.454454454 and this value gives us that inverse offset that merges the red line with the blue line to get us into the perfect linear color profile of the green line. And so with this value you pump in your texture into the value and now if we are to render this image you'll see that our sRGB image is now being displayed in the proper color profile. So this image is perfectly linear and this is the workflow that we need to use. And now uh, let me show you one additional way to gamma correct our colors and uh, our uh, texture images that uh, you don't have to always just use a gamma correct node. Within V-Ray there's also you have the ability to set this back to the default and you'll see our overexposed sRGB image. You can go into that texture file itself and then go up to attributes V-Ray texture input gamma and this will add an extra V-Ray attribute that sets a texture input gamma of 2.2 to that image which in effect has the same effect as adding that traditional gamma correct color node to the texture itself. So if I render again you'll see that our sRGB image is being viewed in the proper color space just like it was using the gamma correct node. It's just a, a, another way, another road to lead you to the same place but I have found that this extra V-Ray attribute uh, gamma correction is, can be useful in scenarios where say you have a match moved uh, camera in your scene and the image plane that is attached to that camera of the plate that the camera was created from you can't send that image plate into hypershade in order to apply a gamma correct node to it so while you're doing your look dev and your lighting to the plate that's attached to the camera um, it will look washed out but if you use this extra V-Ray attribute you can select the image plane, uh, the image plate that is on your match move camera and add this extra V-Ray attribute and it will be brought into the proper color space and that way you can do all your lighting and look dev uh, with your images being viewed the way that they're supposed to. And additionally we can add gamma correct nodes to our shaders to make sure that our colors are accurate to the swatch. Now the swatches in Maya are not uh, gamma accurate so you have to add a gamma correct node to them as well which we'll do right here. So take a gamma correct node, drop it into the diffuse color and now we'll go ahead and render and you'll see that the color from the swatch will be reflected in the color of the sphere. And there you go. Now our swatches are one-to-one -one accurate with what we're rendering and um, you do that with a value of 0.454 across the board 454, 454 and uh, when you render you'll have 100% uh, swatch accurate color. You can uh, input your HSV accurate numbers. And one additional trick that I often use that I think would be relevant to show you is you can use Nuke to verify that we are in fact in the proper linear color space. And the way that you do that is we have loaded here both of our images this is our HDR high dynamic range image and this is our sRGB image that we used on our planes in our Maya setup. And the way that we know that this image is sRGB 
is if you find the hottest hotspot in your image and then look at these color values right here. Keep your eye on the red, the green, and the blue. Now an sRGB image will have a color value of one or less. sRGB peaks out at a value of one as you can see here in the red and the green it shows a value of one whereas for our HDR image if we come back to the same spot you'll see that it has a positive value of three, four, uh, potentially the seven and what that represents is that this image has a higher dynamic range of available color to be used uh, than a standard sRGB 8-bit, 16-bit image. So it's a good, uh, a good trick to use when you're getting textures from various sources. Um, just because an image says it's a .exr does not necessarily mean that it is a linear image or that it has a 32-bit floating color profile. You need to bring those into Nuke and use this trick to see do I have positive 1 values? Yes, then that means it's a high dynamic range image. Do I have values of 1 or less? That means it's an sRGB image and it'll need to be uh, getting some type of gamma compensation in Maya. And so bringing this home, on the right in Nuke we have our sRGB image and on the left in Maya we have our sRGB image with the proper gamma correction applied and you'll see that they are one for one. And now if we switch to our high dynamic range image in Nuke and then look at the swatch to the left, you'll see that it matches one for one. And so now we know that our images are linear or sRGB, and we know in Maya that we're viewing them in the proper color space. So this image here is good to go. This workflow is set up properly, and you have a perfect linear image. Now, the last thing I want to show you, because it can trip you up, uh, if uh, you're not paying attention, <laughs> is sometimes we need to get this image into the Maya render view. We've been working exclusively with the V-Ray frame buffer up until now. But if we send this image over to the Maya render view, it looks one for one now, but that's because I've already set up in the display color management. I've set the input color profile to be linear sRGB, but by default the image color profile in Maya is set to sRGB. And so this is where people can trip themselves up, is they've been working in the V-Ray frame buffer and they send it over to Maya's render view and oh my god it doesn't match, something's wrong. Well that's not the case. Everything is just fine, you just have to double check and make sure that your image color profile is set to linear. And essentially what this image color profile tick button is, is the same thing as this sRGB tick button in our V-Ray frame buffer. If we turn this off, you'll see that it's the exact same thing setting this to sRGB. Both of these buttons are just bringing our render views into a proper Gamma 2.2 color workspace. So there you have it, a proper linear color workflow for V-Ray for Maya.